Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Geological Mapping Using Studio 3, including data from SciRevision. Before we begin, to ensure that all registrants are able to view and hear the presentation, can you please use the raise hand button on the left side of your screen to verify that you can hear me? Great, looking good. If you happen to experience any technical issues during the presentation today, please use this raise hand button and we'll attempt to assist you. Now we will allocate time after the presentation for a question and answer session, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please enter them into the chat box on your screen and we'll do our best to address these. Now I'll pass you on to our presenter today, Andre. Okay, well welcome everyone to um, basically uh, uh, webinar Fridays and my name is Andre Mueller and I'll be running you through the integration of Sire Vision and Studio 3. Uh, first I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm a geologist by trade. Um, I've a bit of uh, basically experience in grade control geology, resource geology, a little bit of geotech work. Um, basically, I'm um, a uh, jack of all trades and, and master of none. I think that's what you've got to be when you're a geologist these days. So anyway, um, uh, I know um, quite a bit about um, SiroVision and also Studio, so hopefully I can show you um, uh, basically um, this integration between both packages. So during the webinar, I will be running, um, I'll be giving basically a short PowerPoint presentation uh, followed by a demonstration of SiroVision and Studio 3. And this demonstration will run for approximately uh, 35 minutes. Um, and this, this will be basically a basic demonstration of the software. So, So for some of you that haven't seen um, SiroVision before, this is, um, this is SiroVision. This is when you first start up SiroVision. It comes up with the, um, this interface. And basically um, SiroVision is a photogrammic um, mapping and analysis tool for geologists and engineers. And um, uh, basically you can do all your geotech work here and map out any joints um, any faults, any structures that you might have. Um, you can also define um, bedding and lithologies um, within this as well. So just the basic rundown of SiroVision, you take a left and a right photo and then you create a 3D image. And that 3D image is just a singular image as you can see one overlapped on the side here. And then uh, basically there's five images one, two, three, and there's another one down here, four and five photos that actually make up a mosaic. And these five, um, 3D images go to making up this mosaic. And the way you can do that is just by actually dragging and dropping each of these 3D images into the mosaics folder and then creating a 3D, uh, sorry, a composited image. After that, you can um, basically do all your mapping and show all your joint sets and get a stereo net over on the side. And you can find your um, jointing domains that you have with this data set. So you can see there's a joint set here, a joint set here, and also a joint set in the middle as well. Now, the so, so just basically, this is um, the, the properties view, it changes all your properties and you can rotate it around and view your data and um, uh, view it that way. This has all been georeferenced also, um, so uh, it sits in, in real space once you've got the surveying to pick up the points and um, you've georeferenced this um, mosaic um, picture. So that's a little bit about um, SiroVision. What's happening? I can't go to the next slide. There we go. Now, Studio MR22, 
um, is a um, geological engineering surveying package and it can do all your resource work or your modelling work or your mine design. Um, uh, it's basically a multitude of, of tools which allow um, uh, people on site to quickly get um, what they need for mine requirements. Um, this shows the same picture of what I had in Cyrovision in the previous slide and this is a, a 3D image of what I was showing with all the joint sets on it as well. Um, for those people who haven't seen Studio 3, um, all your files are loaded up in the object window and you can turn them on and off via the sheets window. So this data that I'm currently using um, uh, is from um, Kangaroo Point and um, here in Brisbane. Now the data was used um, or this, this uh, uh, the cliff that was used to, um, uh, that was photographed and used in Cyrovision was actually used for the development of, of tunnels around, around Brisbane. So they went and mapped these cliff faces and uh, uh, used the data for the design, for some of the design work in the tunnels around Brisbane in Australia. So um, uh, Cyrovision can be used in a number of different ways and um, it's not only for mine design work but it also can be used for um, uh, uh, civil work, dam work, there's a whole sweep of uh, different ways Cyrovision can be used. So coming back to Cyrovision, in Cyrovision there's new export functionalities that, is, uh, that basically you can export out 3D images and this is basically the tab with it, and mapped objects, mapped objects here, and analysis sets, which is down here. So the 3D um, images, you can export out Syro TIFFs and DXF files and um, other formats expected by most major um, software packages. Um, so if you are exporting out, um, just remember that you can um, export out a number of different um, formats to whatever software package that, you, that you're working in. In the mapped objects, you can export out joint sets, strings and points, all out of basically this, this window. And so it's quite, quite powerful. You can see his um, Studio 3 exporter with all the, um, uh, the mosaics which um, uh, or sorry, the 3D images and the mosaic which I created before. And you can also export out the analysis sets out of Cyrovision as well. So your kinematic sets and um, stability analysis, you can export all of this out of the analysis tools. Or if you wanted to get certain orientation um, joint sets um, out in one file, you can specify it in the analysis set um, exporter. When moving it into Studio, um, it's basically it's, it's fairly simple. It's basically just drag and drop it into the VR window. But there's also um, the data source drivers, which um, you can import data through. And um, these improved capabilities um, basically allow for DXF, SJT, and SIROTIS to be imported into um, Studio 3. And some of the features included with the data source drivers are basically you can decimate a wireframe through these, these functions here, these two functions. You can also match the attributes of the images coming in. So these are all the 3D images um, that go to making up the mosaic as I was showing you in the um, CyroVision um, mosaic because that was made up of five photos. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five photos there. So you can select whichever photo you want to bring in or you can just bring in the whole lot as one um, total mosaic. Um, so the matching attributes are basically any attributes associated with um, uh, the image that you're bringing in. So if you've got um, data 
with the same attributes, it will follow through and link all of them. There's also the texture, which is the picture of the um, image or mosaic. So if you um, do not tick this, the actual file will be a lot smaller and you'll just pull in the wireframes. And the group number. Now the group number is um, each of these um, wireframes has a group number, so it knows how to distinguish between each of the wireframes in this mosaic. The um, undecimated wireframe, um, it's basically a crude method of um, decimation and it, it basically works in a, if you can imagine a, a DTM, a flat DTM with a 2D grid over the top and it will crudely take out some of those points um, based on uh, the size of basically the box that you specify. The decimation, um, decimated wireframe function, that will um, honour any highs and, and basically lows within your data and not changing the actual, uh, too much of the shape of your data. So it's a lot more accurate, the, the decimated wireframe. But if you want a crude method of, of um, decimating wireframes, you can select this method. So the improved features within Studio, you can pull in um, basically all points and string da data can be exported from CyroVision into Studio 3 by simply dragging and dropping into the VR window as I was suggesting before. All joint set information from CyroVision can be converted to planes um, either via the importing of strings or planes. And 3D images and mosaics can be exported out of CyroVision and into um, Studio 3 quickly and easily. Automatic decimation functions in Studio 3 allows for data to be loaded efficiently. So this is just basically showing you um, the pictures of here's all my join sets and what I can do is I can basically just exchange the data quickly and easy between CyroVision and Studio 3 and it actually that works quite, quite well. Then creating new uh, a fault within Studio is very easy. You can draw um, faulted surfaces along your CyroVision picture or along any faults that you have within your CyroVision picture and or if it's, you know, this was done for a cliff but for um, open pits you can also um, do exactly the same thing. So this is just a small demonstration of how to cut a wireframe surface with a, dem a DTM using your CyroVision um, mosaic folder. And the way we do that is we use the Boolean operations. And the faults can be converted to um, planes and you can get out the dip and dip direction of these structures and then link the planes with these wireframes so that you have all the dip and dip directions within the wireframe information. And then with the mosaics you can also, um, you can uh, colour the different joint sets based on the orientations and also the dips. And that's what I've basically done with this picture here. I've got the texture or the rock type sitting underneath and then I've got the wireframe coloured based on um, the different orientations from the dip and the dip direction and you can see that you've got a green set of joints, you've also got a yellow set of joints and you've got a pink set of joints through here. And this can be quite handy when you're, you're mapping and um, you don't recognise that there's a certain joint set in one direction but you can define um, the different orientations and apply a flag to your data so that you can go and view to see if there's any different joints that you might have missed. We're picking it up in the stereo net, but there might be other areas which you might not pick up when you're, when you're mapping, um, maybe using CyroVision or maybe down in the pit and that, that you're mapping that you might miss something. So um, just a quick run through, there's, there's going to be, uh, before I get onto the demo, 
Um, there's going to be uh, further um, webinars coming up. So if you're interested in these, I suggest that you register. But also um, just be aware if there's any topics that you'd like us to do in the future, um, please let us know and um, we'll try and work towards uh, showing those features. Um, the webinar that I'm giving at the moment, um, it's, it's generally not covered in training that well, so it's a, it's a good feature to show um, basically do uh, uh, in a webinar session. Okay, so webinar time, or demo time I should say. Hold on, we're having a problem. So basically I want to show So basically, I want to show um, CyroVision and uh, CyroVision first. And just to show you, here's the 3D mosaic, the composited image. And basically, you can rotate it around. You can zoom it in and out. You can draw all your joint sets on this. And you can see all the joint sets which have actually been drawn. And I've um, previously done this. Oh, it's, it's going a little bit slow because of the internet connection, um, but I think you can, you can um, visually see that it's, um, uh, when I rotate it, it rotate, it's basically showing the joint sets and also um, the fault lines, and that's in the composited image. Now, you might be quite flickery on your screens because of the, of the internet connection with this. So I'm going to close this up and I'm just going to show you a 3D, what a 3D image looks like just so that you can see basically the 3D image. Here comes the 3D image and if I rotate it around you can see that it's just one singular photo. Okay, so if we want to export out the um, data out of CyroVision, what we need to do is we need to go up into Tools and go to the Export Wizard. And this is what I was showing you in the PowerPoint presentation, is that the, you can export out 3D images mapped objects and analysis sets. And for this one I'm going to select the 3D image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export out all these 3D images, this one here, this one, this one, this one, this one, and also the composited image that I had up before with all my mapping on it. So I can export it out as a, um, as a TIFF file, as a DXF, now DXF won't have the texture or the image displayed on it. Um, and I'm going to export all of these images. I could select an individual image if I want to by just clicking on here and then selecting it. Or I can select all. This spatial resolution, this will save with, with the file. Um, and it allows, when Studio loads up the data, it will allow um, basically a, spatial, a reduced spatial resolution to apply to that file. The destination folder, if I just click on the little icon on the side and then I select the area that I want to save my data to. And then I just select next. And it actually goes quite quickly and it writes out the file extremely, extremely quickly. Now, the file date on these will be when this was created and I did this on the 4th, so it's writing to see CyroVision um, Studio 3 training to this directory. And while I'm in CyroVision, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export out 
also the mapped objects. So we saw before that on the composited image we had all the mapping data. So if I go and select the composited image and Then I'm going to select data mine and I'm going to ex ex um, export out the, the nodes. Now the nodes are the strings um, and the disk outlines are actually the, the, the um, basically the, the outside, uh, the, basically the, the, the planes, it's the outside of the planes that you create. So it exports out the disk around the outside. So I can also select my destination folder, so it's exactly to the same place, and I just need to give it a name. So this is all my joints. It's going to ask, do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. And you can also export out the survey lines and points here as well. Um, I sort of prefer um, exporting the discontinuities as strings. Because then if I've got any faults that I've drawn as traces in Cyrovision, um, well then I can um, basically select them when I'm in Studio 3 and indicate that they are a fault. So, um, or what I could do is I could just use survey lines and points to export them as a CSV or a text file depending what I'm pulling out of Cyrovision and into Studio. So if I just go next, and this goes quite fast as well, it will spit out a um, DM file and that will just be joints. So you can also export out from um, Cyrovision analysis sets and you can select the data that you want to export out is exactly the same. I'm basically doing exactly the same and it gives you the functionality to um, export out um, the different joint sets, the, the different orientations of joint sets that you've um, uh, um, allocated in Cyrovision um, based on your, on your stereo plot um, and also um, any wedge analysis information that we export that out as well. And here's my analysis set, and I can export any of these when I when I select them. Let's you export out in a number of different um, package types. So um, I'm not going to bother doing those for, for this one. So that's the basic setup of Cyrovision. Now, if I just minimise this, and I go to Studio 3. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to pull in the um, TIFF files and you can also pull in SJT files and um, you can pull in DXFs as well. But um, I'm just going to show you the, the different methods of pulling in data into the VR window. So. Firstly, if I go to where my data is sitting, so here's my data, and you can see that here's all my 3D images that I've created, and this is in my working folder. Now, if I hold down the, uh, the shift key, and then I drag and drop these files into the um, VR window. I'm working in the VR window at the moment and drop them. It will load up two images. And this will come up on your screen in a minute. It's just thinking about it. A bit of a slow connection. So there they are, both of them. And then, if I just zoom all, you can see it's 
there's my three, there's my two pictures I just dragged and dropped. Now they are individual photos. And I can select any one of those, those um, TIFF files that, that um, go to make up or that I've exported from Cyrovision. So I can export any of these. I'll just pull in one more just so you can see. And there you can see basically there's another photo that we've just pulled in. So you can just drag and drop those photos. You can also go to your CyroVision project. I'll just close these up. You can also go to your CyroVision project that you're working in. And here's my CyroVision project. And if I select the um, uh, basically the 3D image folder that's created from CyroVision, it's got an SJT file there. They're quite big files. And I can drag and drop the SJT file which is created from Cyrovision. It's a native file to Cyrovision into the VR window in Studio. So I can also do that as well. And there it is. And that's, that's an SJT file. So you can um, import TIFFs and SJ, SJT files directly from CyroVision without even exporting out of CyroVision. The TIFF files will have to be exported out of, out of CyroVision unless you want to pull in the, the 2D pictures that you originally took. So you can see that there's my SJT file and I can pull up as many, many of those, those files. The other way that you can um, pull in data is through the data source drivers if you want some control over um, uh, the decimation method, um, matching attributes, grouping. And that's going through data, load, data source drivers, other, this is the way I go to it, there's, there's quite a few ways. Sorry, vision, and you can pull in points, strings, for this one I'm going to pull in wireframes and basically you can select a file that you want to pull in. So if I just go and uh, select basically this, this file and go open and Basically this is the, I'm only pulling in one image at the moment, but if I was pulling in the mosaic it would come with five um, uh, 3D images. At the moment there's only one. And these are the decimation methods that I was talking about previously. Um, the matching attributes, the texture and the grouping. Now there's also, there's also um, uh, basically the um, camera orientation, some statistics, wireframe information and image um, information on that as well. Um, just for for this demonstration, I'm just going to drag and drop the, um, the composited image TIFF file straight into the VR window, and then what I'm going to do is um, start drawing some faults on that image, so that um, uh, we can see how exactly what's the best way of of creating a, a wireframe. Um, uh, wireframe fault or a, a fault line from the 3D image which I've got loaded up from CyroVision. So there's my image. Now if I look really closely at this photo I can see that there's some faults. And I'll just wait for this to catch up. Now you can see that there's a fault running basically down through here. There's also another fault basically along this surface here. I think it's taking a little bit of time to catch up maybe on your computer but 
you can see that there's a fault surface here. There's also a small little fault running down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some planes along these faults. And the way that I need to do this is I need to set the view plane so that I'm sitting um, basically on this fault plane. So if I select plane by three points by hitting the three key on, on my keyboard, and then I click on, I make one point, then I do a second point, and then I also do a third point using plane by three points. What it would do is set the view plane so it's sitting exactly on that plane. I'm just going to change some of the, the view settings so I can see it. And you can now see when I zoom out and I rotate around exactly where that view plane is sitting along that fault. Now you can see I'm sitting exactly along that fault. Now to get perpendicular to um, where my view plane is sitting, I can just go on to Align view, and now I'm sitting directly um, perpendicular to that fault. I'm going to draw a surface, um, basically a fault surface, and then I'm going to cut that surface with the DTM from um, basically my pit, or in this case it's um, the cliff face, and um, show where the fault actually goes underneath that DTM surface. So firstly, I'm going to go Design, String Tools, Rectangles by Corners, and I'm going to um, select one corner and another corner, and that's my first fault plane. Then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to set the view plane basically along this fault here as well. Go plane by three points as well. So I select the first point, the second point, and also the third point. And that should set the view plane again. And if you're not happy with where the view plane is sitting, I can see that's a little bit off. Maybe that fold is running through there, but if you're not happy, I'll just do it again. I'll go three points again. And I should be more perpendicular to that fold. That's a bit better. I can see that that fold it's pretty close. I could go back and do it, but that's close enough just for a demonstration. So then if I go and align the view again and I zoom out and I'm going to create another, um, another string, but um, it's going to be my fault plane. So design, rectangle, so uh, rectangle by corners. I'm going to change the colour for this one and I'm going to make it green. And I'll select one corner and another corner. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my third, third fault. There's one basically sitting on this plane here. Just wait for it to catch up on the screen. And you can see that there's another fault plane here, so I'll do plane by three points again. It's a good way to basically get on the fault plane that you're looking at, plane by three points. So now I'm sitting on this plane here, exactly down through that fault on that surface. 
Okay, so now what I'll do is go and align the view again, and I'll do one more. So design, string tools, oh sorry, design, rectangles, rectangles by corners, and I'll make this one blue. Okay, so now I've got all my, um, basically my, my, my interpreted faults. And what I can do now is I can, I can create a new wireframe, so CNW. And then what I'm going to do is just going to end link all of these wireframes. So end link, ELI. One, two, and three. And I'm going to turn off my view plane as well. Turning it off here. So I've got all my faults. There's my faults running through my um, Sire Vision. Um, 3D image that I bought into Studio. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the DTM of the Brisbane River. And this just shows the Brisbane River running around here. And this is the Kangaroo, Kangaroo Point cliffs that run along the side. And I've just gone over and taken some photos from over there and just interpreting some, some faults. So now what I can do is I can cut the, um, these wireframes with the wireframe, the DTM surface wireframe. So if you've got an open pit, well then you could do the same as well. Open, if you've got an open pit DTM, you could do the same. So now if I go to um, wireframes, Boolean operations, extract separate, and I need to select my new wireframe and also my topo or my DTM. We don't want a single output. I'm going to select no for the first one. Oops, I did yes. I picked a few too many then. But that's all right. We can just uh, turn off some of these. And now I just need to select the wireframes below this DTM surface. So I'll just turn them all off and then I'll turn them all back on. So I'll just delete him out because I don't know if I can need him. It's not that one. It's not going to be that one be that one. Not going to be that one either. This one we're going to select. And this one. So now if I bring up my DTM again, you can see that there's my wireframe surfaces. And it's just thinking about um, about those surfaces, but you can see the surfaces sit below the, the, the topo, and now I can pull up my composited image, so you can see that information. And if I want to, I can change the colour of the DTM surface so I can see it. So now you can see where the faults are actually piercing the DTM surface. Okay, and that's based on this fault this fault here, and also this fault as well. So if I want to find out the orientations of these faults, what I can do is, what I'll do is I'll just delete out some of these files that I don't need. So, so 5, 3 and 1 are the ones I'm going to need. 
So what I'll do is I'll just take out some of these. Take out a few more. And, oops, not number four. Number two. Okay, so there's my wireframes. So now what I can do is I can um, find out the dip and the dip direction of these wireframes by selecting the strings and creating the planes from these strings by going up to Design, String Tools, Convert Strings to Planes. And not a lot of people know about Convert Strings to Planes. And it creates a new planes um, file in the Loaded Objects window. And I can view what that data is and the dip and the dip direction of each of these faults. So I can either um, save these out, data, save, save as, and I'll just call it new planes. Yes, to save in the file. And then if I go and have a look at new planes, you'll see that you've got the S dip and the dip direction associated with it. And also you've got the colour. Now the colour, what you can do is you can um, attach this information to your wireframes basically using join. So you can have the um, dip and the dip direction joined to my wireframe surfaces over here. And that's just using the join function. I'm, I'm not going to um, do that now, but if you want to, you can um, join your planes, your plane information, to your faults just using the function join. Well, actually, you might have to use MG sort and then join on, on the actual file. So that's my faults. So if I just unload this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the um, basically the uh, other joints that we pulled in from Sirovision that we created before. And if I just go and look for my my joints. There's my joints file that we created before. You'll see when we zoom right in, there's all my joints in there. Now if I turn off, we can also um, uh, change these to planes as well. This is the file that I downloaded from Sirovision before. And if I go back into the Sheets window and turn off my new strings, and then do exactly the same, design, string tools, convert strings to planes. Basically, we've got all the um, joints associated with this. And then it's created this new file called New Planes. I can go up to Data and, sorry, Applications, Charting, and StereoNet. And basically we'll do a stereo net of all these joints that we've exported out of um, Sirovision and into Studio. There's my new planes. We're going to pick the dip and the dip direction. I'm going to display that. So here's all my points. And if I go to charts, I select cool maps. Basically colours in a nice way. You can also set the, um, the joints also. You can define each of the joint, joint sets. Joint one, if I want to define another, I can define another, joint two, and so on. You can, you can do as many as you want, basically based on this field. And then you can see that the the poles, and here's our um, uh, joint set um, uh, plane. 
basically opposite the, the poles. So we're running a little bit late. Um, so just further information, there's all the stats here on joints as well that I've just done for those two sets. So you can, you can see all that information as well. Um, but generally the sets is quite, quite useful and also cool maps. You can also do contours and show all the contours as well. And finally what I wanted to show you was how to colour your wireframe underneath your texture. So I'm just going to unload a little bit of data. I'll just unload a little bit more. Uh, I'll just select these. Okay, now what I wanted to show you was um, basically um, how you can colour the this wireframe based on the direction of each of the triangles with inside this um, uh, basically Cyrovision 3D mosaic um, that's been brought into studio. So the way you can do that is I've got a macro here and if you contact support well then we can um, uh, I can send you this macro. Um, basically what I did was, it's a very simple process. It basically uses um, Anizo, Anizo Eng and we basically put in the 3D image. Um, uh, we, we actually put that in and then it runs Anizo Eng. We run COG try on it. We run an extra statement on it and then we're just doing some sorting on the file. And then all I'm doing is I'm assigning um, basically a flag to the, um, the different triangles within the wireframe. So anything less than 45 degrees, and that's between 0 and um, 45, sorry that was a dip, anything less than a dip of 45, and also a dip direction of 0 to um, 45. Um, we're going to flag at three. So basically your, your dip and your bearing, you've, you've factored in and you're assigning a flag to it. And then it, all it does, it gives, gives out a um, wireframe file and it, it actually runs very fast, that, um, that macro. And the file that's actually given out looks like this. So I've just got two... I've got two um, uh, files loaded. I can, I can actually take out the, um, the topo. And then I can colour the actual um, wireframe based on the flag. Okay. And then you'll see, you'll see I've got the wireframe or the wireframe uh, coloured, and also the um, composite image up as well. Now, when I rotate it around, you can start seeing the different colours within the, basically the dip and the dip direction. Of the um, of the certain uh, triangles within the wireframe. Uh, it's probably not dark enough. Let's make that a bit darker. But as you rotate it around. Just trying to write the file again. You can start seeing all the different yellow triangles along those faces. And then when I rotate it around, gee, I probably just need to make that one just a little bit lighter, just so I can see into it a little bit. Probably 
too much. Why has that gone to a little bit darker? Let's go the other way. That's a bit too much. That's probably better. And then when I rotate up, you can see all the green triangles. And this is based on the orientation sets that I've got selected. And then when I rotate down, you can see all the blue triangles. And when I look straight ahead, you can see all the pink triangles. So it's a good way of, of letting the computer define where the orientation sets actually are instead of visually doing it. So you can see all the blue ones, you can see all the green ones, and you can see all the yellow triangles as well. So it's, um, it's a good way of, of just looking at your data. I should actually put up the, the different joint sets as well. So that's basically what I wanted to show you, that, that um, a little bit about the integration of SiroVision and Studio 3 and how to pull in data. So have we got any questions quickly? I know we're running out of time. Okay, thanks for that entree. So um, one question that we have received here, uh, what enhancements are planned for SaraVision and its integration with Studio? So um, there is um, going to be further work done on the integration and um, uh, basically um, what enhancements are planned for the future of the integration. So there is also going to be this is going to be included in SiroVision, um, uh, in the latest version of SiroVision. Um, there's uh, also a lot of the functionality will be seamless between both packages because there is going to be further work in, in that area. Um, we had a question from uh, Sam. Um, the processing of, of raw data, it's actually very fast. Um, I've just pulled in, this file was actually a 250 50 meg file and you can see how fast actually that pulled it in. Um, the, the processing steps um, are really quite fast now um, because of the decimation that's um, been um, added by the developers. So um, that's definitely come a long way since since um, uh, the earlier versions of SiroVision were out there. Because I think with the earlier versions, I don't think there was, um, the integration wasn't there, so they've actually been working quite hard on, on fixing that up. Okay, and one last question. Uh, when are the new releases of Studio 3 and SiroVision scheduled for? So S Studio 3 is in beta testing at the moment. It's MR23. Um, uh, SiroVision um, has just released um, the latest version, and I think it's uh, 5.2. Now the versions that I'm using um, uh, for SiroVision, I used uh, 5.16 and Studio 323, 173. So there's um, the latest um, versions. There's going to be newer versions within the next next month. Okay, thanks, Andre. We'll probably have to wrap it up there. Uh, so this marks the end of today's webinar. Thank you all very much for attending. We hope you found the content presented valuable. If you did submit a question that we were unable to address, please rest assured that these have been recorded, so we'll touch base with you as soon as we can. Uh, you'll now be redirected to an online feedback form. It will take no more than a few minutes to complete, so if you do have the chance, we'd really appreciate your feedback on, today's, on how today's webinar went. Uh, we will also be sending out a follow-up email to all of our attendees. This email will provide you with a recording of the webinar uh, as well as the necessary details to contact us should you have any additional questions. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you all once again for attending today's webinar and thanks Andre. Thanks Eloise. Thanks everyone.